Well, are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Um, many people think they are. Many people swear that they are prepared. I want to uh, read for you um, a passage that many are familiar with, and it's the most horrific passage of Scripture imaginable for me. And uh, that would be in Matthew chapter 7. If you, if you look at uh, verse 13, Jesus says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. So, though many feel like they know the way, they've gone to church their whole lives, they feel like they know the gospel, and very often what people end up doing is uh, making an image of God that looks like themselves. Well, my God wouldn't do that. My God wouldn't send anybody to hell. My God wouldn't. My God, my God, my God. My God ends up looking like the person in the mirror instead of the God of the Bible. You need to be prepared for that. We all need to be prepared for that. And that's the point of this message. And Jesus says also, if you look at verse 15, continuing, and this sounds like today very much, especially on the topic of uh, prophecy, which is so much of what I have on my channel. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. They crave attention and they don't mean anything good for you at all. Um, you'll know them by their fruits. What's the outcome? What kind of fruit do they produce? Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. In verse 18, it says, A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. So what, what is the outcome of the things they say? This is where it gets really scary. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And uh, everybody likes to think that they know who he is. But do you know him? But the, the bigger question is, does he know you? We know who Jesus is, but that doesn't mean he knows you. So it's important that you have a personal relationship with Christ, not just know who he is because you've, you've read the Bible and you've heard some sermons and so forth, but do you have an intimate relationship with Christ? We can start in Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 3. Romans is a book in the New Testament. You know, right about in the middle of the New Testament, and you, you jump in there somewhere, you're probably running to Romans. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we've sinned. Everybody has sinned. There's nobody who is without sin. Romans 3.10-18 gives a, a detailed picture of what sin looks like. It looks like this. That, uh, there's none righteous, no, not one. In other words, there's none righteous, no, not you. And no, not me. Verse 11, no one understands. No one seeks for God. We are all predisposed to go out and look for a God, an image that looks like ourselves after our own making. It's idol worship. We're all idolaters. And we all have this predisposition to find someone who is going to give us what we think we want and who we think God is, and it's, it's not the case. So no one seeks after God. All have turned aside, verse 12, together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. But I would point out that this is the entire purpose of the Ten Commandments and the law in the Old Testament. The law is there to show you that this is God's character. This is after his nature. This is what God looks like. We fall short of it. We can't keep the Ten Commandments. Have you ever lied? 
Have you ever or told a fib? Have you ever stolen anything? Did you ever take a pencil from work or from school? Um, have you ever looked after somebody to lust after them in your heart? Jesus said that if you look upon someone to lust after them in your heart, that you've already you've it's the same as if you have already committed adultery yourself. The scripture is there to show us, the law is there to show us that we're all sinners and we all need Christ. The second scripture, though, says, uh, teaches us about the consequences, and that is, for the wages of sin is death. In Romans 6.23, it says, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The punishment that we've earned for our sins is death. Um, not just physical death, but eternal death. But the third part I want you to look at is, is part of um, Romans 6 23 where it says but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and in Romans 5 8 it says God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Jesus Christ died for us Jesus death paid the price for our sins Jesus' resurrection proves that God accepted Jesus' death as payment for our sins. Jesus lived the perfect life that we could not live. And then he paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. That's how much God loves us. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the, from the dead, you will be saved. Because of Jesus' death on our behalf, all we have to do is believe in him, trusting his death as the payment for our sins, and we'll be saved. Romans 10, 13 says again, it says, uh, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call on his name. Call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sins and rescue us from eternal death. Salvation, the forgiveness of sins, is available to anyone who trusts in Christ as Lord and Savior. Flip back a little bit to Romans 5. Romans 5 1 says, has this message about it. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, in other words, it's like you've been in a court of law, and uh, Jesus has written us a blank check that says, We can, if we take this check, we can pay. The bailiff on the way out, or the clerk, whoever handles the money and pay the penalty for our breaking the law, if we accept it, and then we give it to them and, and the debt is paid. Well, Jesus paid that debt. Our debt's paid on the cross. He bore the wrath of God on the cross on our behalf. And because of that, we can be saved. Our debt is paid. Um, through Jesus, we have a relationship of peace. Romans 8 1 says, therefore there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God now through our Lord Jesus Christ because he paid the, the penalty. There's no condemnation for us, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because of Jesus' death on our behalf, we never have to be condemned for our sins. And finally, we have the promise from God. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says this, says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord knows your heart. The Lord knows where your heart is, and you need to make sure you don't want to be um, unprepared as the, in, as, as the unfaithful servant in Matthew chapter 25. You don't want the master to return and find you not ready and to, to find you doing uh, wickedly. So he is our master whether we recognize him and acknowledge him or not. Someday every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. And so we, to the glory of God, should live our lives in a way that's pleasing to him. And we should share the gospel with others. And we should look forward to seeing him. 
If you're not looking or excited or anticipating uh, the coming of Christ, then you might want to check your pulse. Um, when when I had, uh, you know, a beloved relative going to be coming over to visit, you know, it could be a grandparent or an uncle or wh whomever. Uh, as a as a kid, I was excited. I was I was listening for the saturation of of the wheels, the tires on the street, all the cars that were by the street. Is that him? Is that him? And I'd be running to the window, I'm looking out the door. I'm watching. I'm waiting. I'm listening. I'm and we should be the same way with Jesus. If we love him, we're going to be watching. We shouldn't have the attitude of, eh, he'll get here when he gets here. Um, we are like a, um, a bride waiting for the bridegroom in anticipation. Everything's ready. We have um, our, our white clothes of purity. We're ready. We're ready to meet the Lord. And uh, so check your heart, though. Check your heart. Make sure that you're actually ready to meet Christ. Because um, ultimately what will happen is not going to be good. It'll be um, sitting through a world of judgment during the tribulation when that happens. And, um, and then ultimately, if, uh, if, you know, if you don't repent from your sins, then it's going to be eternal damnation. And, and uh, you don't want that. Nobody wants that. So uh, check your heart. Make sure you've repented of your sins, that you've given your life to Christ. And uh, if you need to go back and revisit these passages again on the Romans Road, read the book of Romans, and, and perhaps better yet, read the Gospel of John and make sure that you're ready to meet him. Because he's coming soon. He's coming very soon. And so your response should look like repentance and living a life that's glorifying to him. God bless. Be real. Keep it real. Be humble.